I'm Eddie Bromley. This is the book of Revelation in five minutes, part eight, the first two letters of Jesus. So in Revelation chapter two, verses one through seven, we have the letter that is dictated by John from Jesus to the church at Ephesus. And what you need to know about Ephesus is Ephesus was a stronghold of paganism, including having a large temple to the goddess Artemis. Um, and we are told that Jesus is the one who has the seven stars in his hand. Each represent one of the angels or messengers of the church and that he's the one who walks among the lampstands. This is a combined picture that they are both secure in Jesus and that he loves them and that he walks among them. Now, the church at Ephesus was a hard-working church. They were no-nonsense church. They were strong in, in face of the pressure from paganism. They resisted false teachers. Yet this one thing Jesus says he has against them, they have lost their love for God and for other people. And unless that love returns, Jesus is going to come and take the lampstand from them. Now, here's why that's important. Without the burning love of God, a church is not a church. It may be orthodox, it may hold to the right teachings, but without, uh, without the love of God, uh, love for God and love for other people, Jesus said that was the essence of Christian faith and biblical faith, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and love uh, your neighbor as yourself. Without that, you're not a church. It might be something else, but you're no longer a church. But if they'll return to their love, uh, Jesus will give them fruit from the tree of life uh, found at the beginning of the Old Testament in the Garden of Eden, also found in the new garden the, of the new Jerusalem. Um, in other words, they're being invited to participate in eternal, in eternal life. And the very nature of what that eternal life is, is participating in the life of God, which is characterized by holy love. In Revelation 2, 8 through 11, we have the second letter, this letter to the church at Smyrna. And Smyrna is a small, weak church that is struggling to survive. And what's important to remember is that at this point in history, probably the 80s or 90s, uh, Christianity and Judaism have not ruptured from one another. They are still um, they are still part of one another. Christianity is still mostly a movement within Judaism, and so most of the followers are Jewish Christians. And uh, these Christians are suffering at the hands of their fellow Jews. They're suffering persecution, uh, legal problems, uh, suffering physically. And it is so important that Jesus here is described as the first and the last, the one who was before anything else existed, and the one who will exist long after everything else is gone, and the one whom death could not overcome. He promises that this church will stand faithful and persevere to the end. He will give them a victory crown. They will rule the new heavens and the new earth with him. The last, the least, the forgotten, the marginalized will become first, and the first will become last, and the meek will inherit the earth. I'm going to um, finish this video just giving you a little bit of music. There's not much. There's not much of anything to look at in this next clip, but I. Uh, but I did this video during a lock-in, a youth lock-in, and our youth. Uh, took over an old racquetball court in our church and sang uh, a worship service during it. Again, there isn't much to look at, but it is some beautiful singing, and I want to share that with you here at the end of this, um, at this last bit of our program together. We'll come back together, and we'll uh, next time we'll talk about two more letters from Jesus in the book of Revelation. Yeah. Mm -hmm.
If you like this video, please give it the thumbs up and subscribe to be informed about new content.